Hello and welcome to today's webinar hosted by Sotero, providing technologies and expertise to help optimize Microsoft and other strategic software vendors since 2007. Today, we're going to be looking at the upcoming end of support for Microsoft Windows 7, Office 2010, and Server 2008. My name is Matt Fisher, and I'm the Chief Storyteller here at Sotero, and I'll be your host for today. Doing most of the talking, however, is my colleague, Dan Whitefield. Dan is an expert Microsoft licensing consultant. Now, we will be able to take live questions during today's webinar. So if you'd like to submit a question, please use the console provided. Today, we're going to be talking about three major events for Microsoft customers in 2020. The first is end of support for Microsoft Windows 7. Now, although Windows 7 was launched originally in 2009, as late as March this year, there were estimates that Windows 7 is still the prevailing operating system on as many as 39% of PCs. Similarly, Office 2010 is something that we see regularly on our customer inventories, despite the age of the application. And although it was officially end of life in 2015, Windows Server 2008 is still very popular. As of 2018, there were still millions of enterprise apps running on Server 2008 operating systems. So although we think of these apps as, and operating systems as being somewhat outdated, there's still a lot of it out there in the wild. So when I hand over to Dan in a moment, he's going to take us through three key things that we need to know. When are the end of supports kicking in for these three Microsoft products? How do we plan ahead? And what are our options in terms of moving forward? So with that said, Dan, I'd love to hand over to you to take us through the presentation. So thank you, Matt, um, and welcome everyone to the end of support webinar. So you'll probably be familiar with the term end of support. So let's start off with what that actually means. When Microsoft stops supporting a version of its products, it stops issuing security updates and all support for that product. As an example, Windows Vista and Windows XP no longer receive any kind of updates or patches. Even if people discover huge holes in security, there will not be a release from Microsoft. And in effect, you're out on your own. Now, as a customer, you could run antivirus tools and other security software to try to protect yourself, but antivirus is just one layer of defense and never all encompassing. And even security programs will gradually drop support for older versions of Microsoft products. This means an end of support announcement from Microsoft becomes a signal to other software and hardware vendors. For instance, Windows XP support ended in April 2014, but Chrome didn't stop supporting Windows XP until April 2016, and Mozilla Firefox officially dropped support for Windows XP in June 2018. So even if it's not immediate, the end is nigh. And as shown on this slide, the end of support dates for these Microsoft products all happen within the next 12 months, which should act as a call to action for any organization that has these product versions deployed. So what I will be presenting today will be the following points. Discovery and inventory, the products themselves and the options you have, how to move forward and how to manage that plan. So one of the biggest challenges facing customers today is to correctly inventory their network to have maximum coverage in order to discover exactly where out of support machines reside. And that includes the discovery of all devices on the network, the avoidance of false positives, the inclusion of any remote devices and virtual instances, and the ability to distinguish between different editions and versions. This is where a strong ITAM tool can help a customer to give them information around exactly what their deployments are running. Now, normalizing that data with a recognition service is where all inventory data is normalized into simple, actionable information or product titles for decisions to be made and residencies to be identified. 
With a combination of these products, a, a customizable dashboard capability is essential to pull the relevant information for a particular business requirement and will show IT professionals quickly and easily where the machines with end of support software and or operating systems reside, allowing for risk management to be performed. Now, just a disclaimer here, um, this is an environment for demonstration purposes only and does not denote any live customer data. So within a platform itself, we can see, for instance, the computers running Windows 7 or prior versions. Uh, so let's look at the ones sitting in, for example, New York. Now, this is a table of devices showing us PCs and laptops running Windows 7 or prior versions. A user can chart this data, they can save it, and they can export it and do whatever they need to do with it. Now, on a particular device, you can also drill down and see what information has been captured on that device through a menu of options, including things such as software, where we can see licensable software for Office Standard 2013, uh, 20, 2003 and 2010, which will make up part of our end of support items. Now, let's just go back to the dashboard. To give a different perspective on this, for instance, I may be talking to Dell, and I want to know how many PCs and laptops I have made by Dell running Windows 7, with a view to upgrade those machines. Now I'll click on my Windows devices and I can see all those Windows operating system devices. Here, I'll move over to the operating system. I put in seven and I can see all the laptops, all PCs running Windows 7. Now with this information, I can actually add into the hardware tab what manufacturer I want to see. So we already have Dell there, and we can see that we have 200, and, well, once I press enter, we have 264 devices running Windows 7 that are manufactured by Dell. Now, what can I actually do with that information? If I want to turn that into a chart, um, and I want to know how many PCs and laptops I have made by Dell running Windows 7, and I'll just move up to here and add into the chart button. Now, this shows me um, the operating systems by default, but we already know that all those operating systems are Windows 7. So if I come into the field, I can actually move up to the hardware and I can look at which models those are running. And I can add that into whichever format I like. So I can have column chart, a donut chart and it will show me each of those models running Windows 7 manufactured by Dell. I can quickly save that um, and I can name that Windows 7 Dell machines. Save that down and what I want to show you quickly is how I can add that into my dashboard. So I come back into my dashboard and what I'm going to do here is simply press edit, go down to add an item, I want to add my chart, and it, the system actually takes me back directly into where I was before, and I press OK, and there I can see those Windows 7 Dell machines. Now, I don't like the slide button down there on the side, so I can actually drag that out a bit to make it a little bit bigger. And I want to add that somewhere near the top of my dashboard. There we go. And I can actually press the save button. And now we have that as part of the dashboard. So it's very easy to take raw data and turn it into something valuable to meet a particular business requirement. Within a few clicks, I have located all of the devices running prior to Windows 10 in New York. Now I've identified all of the devices that are Dell, that are running Windows 7, and are potential candidates for my negotiations. Now, 
These great reporting capabilities come naturally with a good discovery, inventory and user interface. So moving on to the next slide, we have all the affected products that are going end of support and we will look at those individually. Firstly, let's take SQL Server as the end of support date is already lapsed. The SQL Server 2008 R2 or earlier, the simplest way to maintain patches, security updates and support would be to upgrade the, upgrade the deployments to a supported version of the product. However, we also appreciate that business critical applications cannot always be easily migrated to a new version. There are a couple of other options that customers may be able to leverage. The next one is that for current enterprise, enterprise subscription or server and cloud enrollment customers who bought their licenses and have current active software assurance are able to purchase extended security updates or ESUs up until June 2022. Pricing will be calculated on the number of cores licensed for a customer's on-premise environment, and they are available in 12-month increments, where pricing will remain the same for each 12-month period. So in other words, there will be no price increase on ESUs up until 2022. This would also cover any failover instances that a customer may have of SQL Server in the same way that traditional licensing would. The third option is to migrate SQL Server workloads to Azure, where the aforementioned extended security updates are free of charge for virtual machines hosted in Azure until 2022. Now, just by migrating to Azure does not take the issue away. It simply gives you time to build a plan for upgrade, which we will look at a little bit later within this session. The next product is Windows Server 2008 R2 or earlier, and it is very similar to the SQL Server. The simplest option would be to upgrade these deployments to a supported version of the product. Again, a customer with an EA, an EAS, or a SKI agreement, an Active SA, can also purchase the ESUs out until 2022. And Microsoft actually suggests an upgrade path to move Windows Server to 2012 version, then 2016, and finally 2019, with a view to possibly lifting and shifting the workloads to Azure, which takes us nicely onto the third option, which is to migrate Windows Server workloads to Azure, where again, the extended security updates are free of charge for virtual machines hosted in Azure. Now we have Windows 7. So, the simplest method, again, would be to upgrade the client's operating system to Windows 10. As a customer may already be in a Windows 7 to Windows 10 migration, they may need to manage the risks of the machines that are not yet migrated. For this, they have a couple of options, or they may already be covered. The first option would be to purchase extended security updates. However, there are some differences with the ESUs for Windows 7 than there were for SQL and Windows Server. So the Windows 7 extended security updates have been made available for customers with volume license programs, but also through CSP, the cloud solution provider reseller program, which means there are no minimum seat sizes to be able to leverage this product. The Windows 7 extended security updates will be sold on a per device basis, and the price with the price increasing each year up until January 2023. However, Microsoft have not confirmed what those increases will be. For the first year, the pricing will be around $50 per device. That is halved if the customer has a current M365 E3 subscription and is actually free for users covered with an M365 E5 subscription. Now there's an important differentiator here to make between Office 365 and M365, where M365 is a suite of products that includes Office 365, Windows, and Enterprise Mobility and Security. Now the final option 
here would be to purchase a Windows Virtual Desktop in Azure, where again, the extended security updates are free of charge for those machines hosted in Azure. These are also available through the CSP agreement. So again, there are no minimum purchase quantities. Okay, moving on to Office 2010. Office 2010 is licensed on a per device basis and extended support for this product will come to an end on the 13th of October 2020 and there will be no further updates or security patches. So an upgrade to Office 2013, 2016 or 2019 is the remedial action and there is nearly a year to plan an upgrade for any devices still running the 2010 version or earlier. There is no option with Office to purchase extended security updates and the migration to Office 365 is recommended where user subscription licenses may work out a lot less cost intensive depending on how many devices a customer's users connect to. The reason for this is because Office 365 has a user subscription license model and allows a user to deploy Office Pro Plus on up to five devices. The consideration here would be how many users do I have and how many devices do I have in the organization and what would be the most cost-effective licensing model. Speaking of devices, any planned upgrade will have to be qualified against the current hardware capabilities. Part of the control that should be achieved with good ITAM and SAM data is to know which applications and which operating systems are running on the current hardware and identifying whether a higher version of that application or operating system can run on that hardware. In a scenario such as this, a platform that can easily identify these machines is easy to access, is dynamic and presented in real time, showing all this data will help improve productivity and achieve business goals. Now moving back to the platform, um, I have some Windows here. Now Windows 10 um, needs around two gigabytes of memory. So what I have done here is to set a simple dashboard item to show me the number of XP machines with less than three gig of memory. So if I click into here, it shows me a table of data, but what I can actually do is drill down on particular machines and find the information that I need to access. So if I move down to the motherboard machine, uh, the motherboard information, because of my good inventory, I can see that this model has a maximum of eight gig memory, but it's currently running only two gigabytes of memory. Now I could look at upgrading that machine to be able to easily run Windows 10 and there are all sorts of considerations to make when a decision like this. The price and fluctuation of additional memory, whether I want an SSD, the various studies conducted on hardware refresh cycles, but the key takeaway here is that a good inventory will allow a customer to make good decisions and pinpoint on which devices those decisions necessitate an action. Okay. So for any of the products we have discussed, a customer may choose to accept the risk while a migration is in planning or operation and monitor those risks on an ongoing basis. Now there are pitfalls of using this method and some of those include missing out on new productivity features, incompatibility with partners and customers that have already adopted newer software, incompatibility with your own organization where other departments or locations have adopted newer software, and security vulnerabilities from hacks, malware, and viruses. Accepting the risks is not a recommended long-term solution, and Microsoft security breaches, such as the 2017 WannaCry ransomware attack, could potentially leave your organization vulnerable. And even if this um, 
even if this method is deployed for a period of time, a migration plan to a supported version should be put in place. So let's have a look at that. So to build a plan, you need to define what it is you're trying to achieve, be it a cloud migration, an upgrade, or moving to a different licensing model. You need to identify what resources you will require so that, so that you would include conversations with your desktop, data center, development, security, and IT teams, amongst others, to know how this plan can be implemented. You need to structure manageable targets. So clearly, you wouldn't want to migrate or, or upgrade all your devices at once. So you would need to set parameters of 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000 devices per day or per week, so you can easily identify any issues and remediate them in an ongoing basis. And what does success look like? So is success a 100% coverage rate? Is it a 95% coverage rate? Or is it where only a certain group of users or a group of demo machines or a certain organization unit still needs to be worked on to make that upgrade or that migration? And then to track the project, you would need a timeline with executables at certain dates. You would need to track the progress, which is where trend data and a platform with great reporting capabilities so that you can match your good inventory against criteria set by yourselves may be able to help you. You need to be able to report success in an easy way back to your organization and back it up with granular evidence. And then you need to finalize the project um, give feedback and implement any changes that can make your next migration or upgrade even better. So thank you for listening and I will now hand back over to Matt. That's great Dan, thank you. Lots of uh, information there and some live questions that have come in while we've been uh, on air as it were. So one of the uh, questions that's come in is regarding second-hand licenses. Obviously, uh, perhaps most applicable to something like Office 2010. Can you quickly uh, highlight what are the sort of the do's and don'ts of looking at secondhand licensing for a, a potential upgrade path? Yeah, so um, this is actually a, um, a really inter interesting question. So thank you for the person that's given that back to us. But the, the short answer is yes, it is a possibility. However, there are some risks that you need to meet be made aware of. And while I won't go into too much detail, the main ones are that the original licenses have to be bought within the EU EFTA region. Um, and also the perpetual license transfer forms need to be completed not only from the original owner to the second hand license reseller, but also from the reseller to the end customer. Um, and a couple of things that you need to be made aware of with this is that a second-hand reseller license has no affiliation to Microsoft. So the onus is actually on the end customer to make sure that the processes have been adhered to. And it's something that we'd be able to help advise on um, more deeply if that was, um, if that was a, a requirement for, for many of our customers. Great, thanks, Dan. Now, another one is, um, and actually, I could probably combine a couple of questions here. One was asking about other views that might be available in the dashboarding interface that you, you showed. And then there was a, a second question more around virtualization and location. So I'm guessing perhaps we could combine those two and talk about perhaps how you would show uh, information around location and virtualization within the, uh, the dashboards. Yeah, so that's uh, again a good question. Um, and the reporting capabilities within Sotero, the Sotero platform, are actually all encompassing. So essentially, every piece of data that you populate the platform with could be used to create uh, reports to meet your particular business requirements. Now, the options are actually limitless, and all the customer would need to do is tell the system what information it needs through a set of criteria, and the platform itself can be sliced and diced into any way the user wishes. Um, as I showed earlier on with the creation of, of the quick dashboard um, item, it, it actually just needs the user to input what, what criteria needs to be set, um, and within a few clicks of the button, 
the data is all there and you can actually pull out the individual pieces of information that you need. Excellent, good. Look, those are the live questions that we've been able to, to address uh, here and now. There are a couple more that we'll answer offline for you uh, all. But Dan, thank you for your time this morning. Um, and indeed, thanks to everybody that's attended the live version of this webinar. It is also going to be available on demand. And I would suggest that you look out for our upcoming webinars. From January onwards, we'll be looking at a series of other vendors, uh, Oracle, IBM, SAP, uh, licensing masterclasses, if you like, in those, as well as some more thought leadership content from Sotero. But for today, thank you very much for uh, taking part. I hope it's been informative and we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you, everyone.